All right, greetings. Um, we're trying this a second time. Believe it or not, I I messed it up the first time. Uh, well, I got into the I got into your um, into your exercise number eight, and I saw that the uh, I had a number wrong, um, and then that would have screwed up the entire problem. And that's when you're finding the drift of a of a, a Justin Verlander fastball. Um, Verlander lost last night or last night's game. So this is I'm I'm filming this on October on November first of 2017 and tonight is game seven of the fall classic and, and it is a fall classic the dodgers and the uh, and the astros i think the astros would have won this in five games if they had any kind of relief pitching whatsoever but all of a sudden they're when when the royals were winning the world series their wade davis has gone south on them you know he he's and this happens to pitchers sometimes uh, professional pitchers Kind of like uh, it happens to professional golfers too. Something mental goes on in their brain that affects their body, and they get the yips, and they just can't do it anymore. And it's and it's kind of tragic in some ways. Hopefully, this kid will come out of it. Uh, sometimes all they need is a change of scenery, like a change of team. But the uh, Acres was that his name? The, the there's been a book written about him. He was a great fireball pitcher in the Cardinals organization, and he. And, and he just couldn't, he could, as they say in the movie Bull Durham, he could not hit water, you know, as far as the strike zone. He couldn't hit water if he fell out of a boat, you know. He, he, he was bouncing the ball to the plate. He was throwing it over the catcher's head. I mean, it was just, and so he tried to reinvent himself as an outfielder because these guys are superior athletes. So they, um, and it worked okay for a little while, for about a season and a half, and then he just got out of baseball. Because um, then that, that, you know, the kind of the novelty of that wore off. So, anyway, let's go in. For no better reason, let's just go in and, and uh, do this. So, for future generations, this is filmed on November 1st, uh, 2017. All right, I about said 1917. I don't think they had this technology in 1917. So, let's scroll down here. I think now I haven't opened it yet for you all, but let's just go in and look at it. There it is, open. Now, when we did this, I think on your mini, uh, on your mini lesson or your mini quiz, eleven or twelve, I can't remember which one it was. I think we had the coefficient of drag was one point zero. Well, I've been doing a lot of stuff. We're going to do a lot of things on friction and drag in, in for uh, exercise nine. We're not going to have any mini lessons with it next week. We're just going to go in and do it, um, and um, and. Uh, I've I've been reading all kinds of articles and stuff on drag and, and from physics point of view and uh, well there's your answer but we're going to be using 0.5 for for in this problem so p so rho is the uh, is the density of the air oh why am I telling you the answers you know you know all this stuff so here we come down and then put it put all those together and um, you all know. I'm pretty sure you all know how to, let's go ahead and click this on real quick. See, look, we're already through question seven, and, and we, what is that? Oh, that, that looks like a, got to see what's on that next web page. That, that looked crazy. All right, anyway, so the coefficient of drag on um, his pitch, uh, what, I think we were computing the Magnus force here in that. Yeah, this is the Magnus force. And then what we're going to also do is we're going to compute the drag next time because the air is actually slowing the ball down quite a bit. Um, so one of his 100 mile an hour fastballs, by the time it travels to 50 feet, it's only going 90 miles an hour by the time it gets to the batter. OK, I mean, it gets on top of him still pretty quick, but due to the air pushing against it, it slows down quite a bit. All right. So I think we're looking for the Magnus Force. This is exercise eight notes. And I'll be honest, I have to look up that formula every time to make sure I got it right. CD, okay, so it's C, the coefficient, density of air, the diameter of the ball, um, the frequency, and the velocity. There we go. We got them all written down now. That's what you're trying to find, okay? Now, that's diameter cube. So, so when I put this in the calculator, I put that. At, and I do it this way in all parentheses. And then, if you want to be 
real careful if you don't have the cubic function on your calculator. That's the way. That's one way you can do it, and you should get the. You should be okay. All right. Oh, okay. So now we're going to uh, do Queek's home run. Now I do have it on the sheet. You, you can look it up on the sheet here. Uh, but if you just want to do it from here and just plug it in, you can do it from here. The ball left the bat at 103 miles per hour and convert that to meters per second. We should know how to do that by now without any trouble. The ball left the bat at an angle of 24.6 degrees. Use the cosine function and calculate the, the velocity of the ball in the x direction. Okay, so now what are we doing there? All right, well, let's just take a quick look and then we will stop this. All right, so we know that the ball left V is equal to 101.3 miles per hour. Well, we're converting that to meters per second, which is pretty easy. Just that our good old point 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 four four seven um, multiple there. All right, then to find the velocity in the x direction, that's 101.3 times the cosine of the angle where it took off. I think it was 24.1 degrees. Okay. And then Vy is going to equal 101.3 times the sine of the angle that it took off. All right? So let's stop here.